Hey everyone, before we open today's file, please make sure to follow us on Instagram at d.s.radio where you can find all the images that go along with today's case. You can drop us an email at contact.dsradio at gmail.com. You can find all of our socials in the Linktree bio on our Instagram profile, including links to merch. If you're feeling especially generous, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash dystopian simulation radio, where you can get access to our exclusive Instagram page and make suggestions for upcoming episode topics that you would like us to cover. Speaking of Patreon, thanks to our Patreons, Riff Cult, Cropley Crab, Cash Broadus, Raspberry Jr., Jason R. Nelson, Creepy Paper, Jamie Suit, Michael Laughlin, Lindsay Keller, Mike Wright, Gria Weaver, Kelsey Carithers, Linz Gibbon, Drake Holvig, Only Child, Michael M, Wesley Akers, Riaz K, Emily Medeiros, Pip, Heather Wynn, Graves, Devin Sweatshirt, The Ordained Sinister Minister, and Philip Hoffman. Hi everybody and welcome to Dystopian Simulation Radio. I am the captain of the ship today, I'm Chris, and with me we have my co-pilot. I'm first mate Linz. First mate Linz. I love the way you went from ship to plane, (laughs) because you basically forgot. (laughs) I'm the captain of this ship plane. And co-pilot, you sound like a crazy drunk sailor. My (laughs) co-pilot. aviators and like a peg leg. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of the water, we are actually talking about a very specific example to discuss and then a wider chat around sort of the wider application of today's topic. What I'd like to do first is just ask, how are you doing? Good, good. Is, even when I'm not good, I'm good. I was about to say good as always. And I'm like, that's not true. And I'm like, <laughs> Yes, fine. <laughs> and you? <laughs> I am fine. And you? I am okay. Good. Human man. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah. Been enjoying the podcast so far, making it and researching it. And I always look forward to the days where it's your turn. <laughs> and I always look forward to the days when it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you You always find some weird and fun topic to talk about. And uh, I can't wait to see the sea theme. Do you know I like the sea theme You do, stuff? yeah. We know, we've, we've, we know all about, you know, communesi. <laughs> but um, today we're actually talking about is Russia training whales to spy on us? Pop quiz, yes or no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good answer. So aside from the obvious, which is communesi, what marine life do you think would be the most likely to join the armed forces? I know Sweden have trained seals in the past. Mm-hmm. I guess any kind of intelligent animal who lives in the ocean so i want to say like a seal a dolphin um that's all i could really imagine you could train are you you, you calling narwhals dumb no narwhals i don't know if they're trainable but oh my god what a good weapon Mm. a a thing with a big unicorn horn spear on its head imagine if you sort of gilded it in like iron or something and could could pierce for hull of ships a little um knight's costume that would be both uh, deadly and adorable. So, uh, actually, you mean, you're, you're quite right that there have been SEALs trained, but we're, we're going to get more into what has and hasn't been trailed a little bit later on. But the deep dive, if you'll excuse the pun, that we're going to do today actually involves a whale, a beluga whale. So today's file takes place in April of 2019, 
Oh, not, not long. too long ago. Just... And an adorable creature. Mm. In Norway, we will be looking at today two fishermen that were out at sea. And they were north of Hammerfest, which I assumed was a Norwegian black metal festival. But I've since been informed is actually the most northernmost inhabited town in the world with a population of just over 10,000. I thought you were going to say 6,666 and I want to live in Hammerfest. Holy shit, imagine. It's so good. One of the seamen (laughs) uh, was Jor Heston and I'm going to apologise today to any Norwegian homies who are out there listening to this for my (laughs) butchering of your lovely language. Norwegian homies. So that's how they call themselves. Jaw reported seeing a flash of white emerging from the water and then seeing a beluga whale appear and begin rubbing itself against their boat. Oh, like a cat. Yeah. He was shocked because it's unusual, if not nigh on impossible, to find a beluga whale that far south of the Arctic Circle. Also because it was wearing a harness. What? <laughs> Someone had a pet beluga. (laughs) Well, of some kind. This happened again the next day. And the next, the whale was approaching the humans for food and appeared to be rubbing itself against the boat to try and free itself from the harness that it was wearing. Jaw apparently decided enough was enough. He threw on a survival suit and entered the water or he cut the harness from the whale as best he could, eventually working with the whale, pulling in the opposite direction to break the strap through just sheer pressure alone. Now, upon closer inspection, they found the harness was seemingly a GoPro-style camera mount and barred a stamp listing it as the property of St. Petersburg. Oh my God, yes. Yes, seemingly this whale was the property of Russia and this whale may have been an escaped Soviet spy whale. So here I have a picture. So could you uh, could you describe him to me, please? Oh. He is adorable. He's, well, it's a beluga. <laughs> I think people know what that is. But he has kind of a tight looking harness around him. Yeah, it, it doesn't look comfortable. No, it's behind his head and just behind his eye, probably like two inches from it. It looks pretty tight on the neck. And then it looks like it's behind his little flippers mm. too. And is that your feeding him? I would assume so. I don't know. Feeding him a bit of fish. Someone's Some... feeding him a little bit of fish and he's got little teethies and he looks all cute. He does. Like he does a marshmallow. Look... A wet marshmallow. He does look like a wet marshmallow, yeah. <laughs> Quick sidebar, Linz. This whale needs a name. And the Norwegian public voted on TV for what to call, call it. <laughs> but before I tell you, if you had to name this whale, what would you call it? Nikolai. Nikolai. <laughs> yes. Okay. The nice Russian name. Makes Nikolai. sense. Well, I can tell you in reverse order, the top three were, in third place, Agent James Beluga. <laughs> James Pond. Well, that's what I should have missed a trick. <laughs> in second place, named after the fisherman, your. Okay, Aww. fair enough. And in first place, Valdemir. <laughs> oh, that's way better than Nikolai. <laughs> now, on first impressions to an English ear, that might suck a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and you may think that clearly Agent James Beluga is clearly a stupider and therefore much better answer. Mm-hmm. But Val is Norwegian for whale. And obviously the Demir suffix is in reference to Vladimir Putin. So actually, it's a cracking <laughs> Norwegian dad joke. So back to the story. So this whale turns up and they threw it. And the theory comes about that this whale is a Russian spy, or more specifically, a Russian marine agent. So, hey, hey, this is serious business. Come on, calm down. It's so good, sorry. And he's so cute. Now, what evidence do we have to support this? In 2019, the Barents Observer published an aerial photo of the Russian ocean base, which is in the Barents Sea. So, Linz, take a look at this and say what you see. You may have to scroll down a little bit. So we have what looks like... They kind of look like pretzels. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a bay here with some kind of like houses around it. And it's split into two sections. One section has these pretzel-looking... Kind of look like salmon. Yeah, you know like, people like, farm fi- salmon? like what you keep, uh, yeah. fish- like fisheries, yes. Exactly. There's like three pretzel-shaped ones and then one that's just split into two. And then are those boats? 
There are boats. Something's there. going down. I don't know what they're doing, but I imagine there's some kind of creatures in there. I'm thinking belugas being trained to be spies. <laughs> well, if you look very carefully at the one in the middle of the bottom. That one. Can you see there's a little flash of white in there? Yes. A very beluga shaped flash yes. of white. So this, uh, it was put forward as evidence that Russians were training belugas at their base. And you can see here that there's also something uh, that's annotated a bit more. So, oh my gosh. Okay. So this is, it's a less of a bird's eye view and it. It's a diagram. It's labelled. We have visible beluga in four or five of the pens. We have seal pens. Looks like we're keeping and training spy seals for sure. They are. So there's visible beluga in several of the pens. And as well as you noted, there are also seals. It's just in a bay that is nearby an opening into the Barents Sea. So this is where, you know, you could imagine that perhaps... Uh, Valdemir came from. Valdemir, sorry, I'll never get over that. It's so good. <laughs> so it, it is speculated that due to the relative closeness of this facility to Hammerfest and the fact that this whale was found so far south and extremely tame when it came to interacting with humans, that Valdemir was actually a Russian agent. Now, Russia does have a history of using marine life for military applications or at least researching into it. That's not to say that other countries have not done this as well. We'll get onto that a little later. But re recently, Russia appeared to restart its military program following the invasion of the Crimea. At the military facility there, that was previously under Ukrainian control since the fall of the USSR. This is backed up by a post-invasion Russian document, which was leaked when they were looking to purchase several healthy dolphin specimens for trading, which we then did purchase five bottlenose dolphins for £18,000 in total, which seems very cheap, cheap to me. I yeah. mean, £3,600 each? That, like, honestly, I thought a dolphin... Who buys... Well, like, SeaWorld buys dolphins yeah, and Sea stuff, World usually and from, like, Japan military. and stuff. Yeah, but that seems very cheap. Yeah. I mean, I would have thought it'd be more than that. I mean, if Yeah, for a bottlenose dolphin. Yeah. Like, there's dogs more expensive than that. Yeah, there are. I mean, I suppose you've got to have a facility to keep them in, which is probably quite expensive, which might be quite prohibitive. But like, I don't know. But you could literally just buy one and put it in a swimming pool and nobody would ever check. No, they wouldn't. Had, like, I mean, it wouldn't last very long in a swimming pool. Oh, well, obviously. But I mean, like, you could actually buy it. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not suggesting you're anyone not, buy a dolphin advocating a this year. pool. I'm just saying, like, technically. If we can get 3,600 listeners to donate <laughs> to the tip jar, we could have our own DSR dolphin. <laughs> dolphin... Simulation, simulation radio <laughs> radio agent but um radioactive agent but no if we can get 360 listeners that would be <laughs> but if they all if they all donated a pound we'd only have 360 quid so we could only afford like a thin well yeah well um, if we went to um a body broker we could get a couple Ooh, of plug for the body brokers episode. yeah oh so i can say it then you can say we it. could probably afford a few limbs anyways what evidence is there then against Valdemir being a Russian agent. Well, reports surfaced that the harness may have read St. Petersburg, but that's not the type of harness that Russia uses in its marine military oh, program. Oh, so they have a specific harness, do they? Yeah. That's not, I know it says St. Petersburg, but we use different coloured ones. Like, this is just somebody else trying to throw you off. Well, yeah, so they've never <laughs> denied that there is a marine military mm -hmm. program, um, but this is just um, a case of mistaken identity, and Valdemir is actually a different beluga whale known as Sermon. Uh, which is supposedly an escaped beluga whale from a facility on the Russian-Norwegian border where he was used as a therapy animal for disabled children. Oh, that's um, really cute. The harness, which he has, is supposedly there to pull children in boats around. Oh, okay, so... Which would also explain why he was so tame Oh, and well. he's so cute. Linz, I would like you to read the following quote for me, which is from... Russian Colonel Viktor Baronet, which, uh, when he was interviewed on Russian TV and had the following to say about the incident. If we were using this animal for spying, do you really think we'd attach a mobile phone number with the message, please call this number? <laughs> we have military dolphins for combat roles. We don't cover that up. Ooh, okay. In Sevastopol? We have a centre for military dolphins trained to solve various tasks, from analysing the seabed to protecting a stretch of water. 
killing foreign divers, attaching mines to the hulls of foreign ships. Killing foreign divers. That's what he reckons. Um, now, we will get into what they can and can't do later, but he may have been using a little bit of creative license. I hope so. <laughs> but before I go on to tell you what happened to Valdemir, what do you think? Spy whale or therapy animal? I'm now thinking therapy animal because he was so friendly. And mm. I mean, I don't want to get thrown off the scent by the Russian military just telling me we don't use that harness. But if he's so tame and... Well, I mean, it's a very likely scenario yeah. that's floated here. Boom, boom. I don't know. I would have thought that they could have verified that with the facility. Yeah, I do yeah. believe it's closed down this facility now. Is that why he's... Oh, did they just No, go? it was still in operation at the time, oh. I do believe, but... And they didn't have any comment? They didn't have any comment about it. That's strange. However, Valdemir, what happened to him? So he remained in the area around Hammerfest and initially was struggling immensely as it was apparent that he'd never had to hunt for himself before. Aww. Local fishermen had been feeding him but stopped when asked by the government as the whale essentially needed to learn how to hunt and ideally find a group of belugas. I would point out that he's not going to find a group of belugas around yeah, there. I was so it's say. a bit of a difficult thing. But the Norwegian Institute of Marine Research suggested that he should be returned to the Russian facility that he was suspected of escaping from. So either returning this agent back to where he came from or giving him a free dolphin, uh, <laughs> one of the two. The residents of Hammerfest said, no way, Jose, though. And the Hammerfest mun municipality took responsibility for him. After several days, Valdemir appeared malnourished, and it was agreed that he could not hunt and would need to be fed by locals. People all over the world donated money towards his feeding. Oh, yay, tip jar for, um, what was his name? Valdemir. Valdemir. <laughs> it appeared by July of 2019 that the whale had learned how to hunt and had left his base at Hammerfest to explore the surrounding islands. I'm quite impressed that he learned to hunt. Yeah. However... In September, he appeared with some serious injuries after an apparent collision with a boat. No, mm. that is absolutely horrible, but it happens all the time, sadly. Yeah. And he began hunting out humans again in the nearby town of Alta. I thought you said hunting humans again. I was like, well, hunt excuse me? Hunting out humans again in the nearby town of Alta, where people were observed to be taking advantage of Valdemir's nature, sticking fingers and in inanimate objects into his mouth and some reportedly throwing planks of wood at him. That is like the most horrible thing. Yeah. Seriously, why? Fuck you, Alta. Yeah. Now, in late 2019, Regina Crosby, a part-time Norwegian and full-time American, began a campaign to save Valdemir and contacted former dolphin trainer turned activist Rick O'Barry, who flew to Norway and had the idea to guide the whale up a fjord and block it off to the wildlife at one end to create sort of a sanctuary for him. Is that the flipper guy? No, it's not, but he's like Mr. Anytime there is a dolphin in need, he will be there. Oh, I or, swear or I thought that was the flipper guy. I don't think it is. It might be, but uh, he used to be a dolphin trainer. I mean, he's, he's turned yeah. into uh, an activist against all of that. Now, unfortunately, Norway is one of the few countries in the world that still hunts whales. Yeah, I was about to say yeah. them in Denmark. And the current stance of some of the government agencies that would need to have approved a fjord's closure is he is a free whale and that's how he should stay. Mm. Uh, the government is continuing to consult with the activists regarding what is best for uh, the beluga. Arguments for him staying free are that he's free to do what he wants to do right now. Arguments for giving him a fjord are that it would remove him for the tourist. He can be fed and he won't be as lonely as fuck as he is now because you'd have some handlers around him. Yeah. One last note on Valdemir is that he's been seen to be extremely playful and has retrieved a dropped iPhone and returned it to the owner. He's Aww. stolen a GoPro only to bring it back <laughs> uh, and was filmed playing fetch with a rugby ball. However, on a more sinister note, he also approached a diver underwater, of course, stole the knife from his scabbard. And according to the divers, he nicked the knife, backed off about a meter and just floated there with the knife sticking out of his mouth somewhat menacingly. <laughs> they, spy. Yeah. Russian spy. <laughs> so they called off the dive as a precaution, but Valdemir is now armed. <laughs> just to be aware of that fact. I would be armed if people had been sticking their hands and stuff yeah. in my mouth and thrown wood at me. But you know what? He's, he's obviously used to being around people. 
And in a way, that does that kind of make him domestic? In a way, yeah. I mean, it well, so, dom- yeah. He's- you know, he's retrieving things. He's going up to people. That kind of implies, like, like you don't take, you don't find a hamster on the ground. You know, they're not meant to be there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, a pet. You don't go well. He's a free hamster to do what he wants. He's clearly going to die without human intervention. So. Yeah, he's he's not. Could where- we feel the same way about? He's not, it's like if, you know, you looked out the window right now and you saw a, a, an elephant walking down the street. It's not supposed to be there. Yeah. It, it's escaped from somewhere that has brought yeah, that elephant to England. Yeah, it's not wild anymore, yeah. So obviously it needs, like, human care at that mm. point. So is that the same for this I, I, I'd probably say so. I think, you know, ideally it'd be great if you could stay around Hammerfest uh, as a sort of... Black metal mascot. Yeah, black metal mascot. <laughs> slash. Put, it would put be, some corpse paint yeah. on him, like the black black eye It would makeup. be good as a, as a tourist uh, sort of attraction for Hammerfest, which, I mean, before today, I'd never heard of Hammerfest. So yeah. it'd, be, it'd be good as that sort of thing. But at the same time, you also don't want to stress a whale out too much. If there was a, a balance that you could get between it, maybe they could um, do kind of like what they do in Japan and not hunt the whale, you know, sort of monetize it. I was going to say so what they do in Japan. I don't yeah. think they should be doing that at all. No, but if they could take, if, mas- if, if Hamathes could take it on as a mascot, without necessarily exploiting it, having it there every day. But if they could, they could have, you know, fucking keychains with it on. They could have plushes, you know, Valdemir. There could even be a video game where you're a little Valdemir stealing knives from scabbards. <laughs> it that, would be fine. that would fund his own um, fish diet. Exactly. Or, because they could use that money that they get from those products to fund the yeah. care of, uh, what am I going to assume is you know, quite an expensive creature. Or maybe figure out if he was a therapy animal and put him back into his job mm-hmm. so he can do what he likes to do because they're quite intelligent they they yeah. do like to have something to do if they're like not wild exactly so i don't know like uh, like when they go he's a free whale i feel like yes but also he can't hunt he can't do anything and he's lonely so mm. oh hey here's me in the future butting in on me in the past it's time for some feedback Feedback Corner. This week's feedback is regarding the previous episode about the Pensacola Sea Monster. And this comes to us courtesy of the Shark Files podcast. They were kind enough to send across to us a couple of articles which they found behind some paywalls that were too cheap to pay for. This one from the Pensacola, Florida, Pensacola newspaper from the 27th of January, 1975, includes this extract that I found very interesting. In the version McCleary told to reporters at the time, the raft the five were in began to take water due to the rough seas, and they tried to swim back to shore. His companions were drowned. Three years later, McCleary came up with the sea serpent story. Did he make it up? Or was he afraid to recount the true incident in 1962 for fear that people would call him a liar or even worse, crazy? True or false, there are a great many people all over the world who have read his account in Dinsdale's book and believe it. For there are many, if not more, mysteries of nature here on Earth as in outer space. The next time you travel out of the Pensacola Bay Pass on a foggy March day, Look towards the slowly rusting mast of the Massachusetts and wonder. I thought that was a pretty cool little extract, but it does put forward the idea that this was a story that McCleary made up post incident rather than one that was recounted at the time or maybe even happened at the time. As you might have guessed, the Shark Files podcast has a bit of a sharky edge to it, and they did say in their comments to us that uh, they thought a right whale and maybe a shark were also involved as well. I'm not sure if they were working together, like some kind of buddy cop duo, but he said that we'd made a strong case for the whale, but with animals feeding in the area at nighttime, people in distress in the water, and it being Florida, that screams for an attack, missing bodies, and a dorsal fin that was mentioned by McCleary as well. He would put forward that it was a tiger shark that may have been involved too. He does also say, though, that it could be anything, and he's a little bit biased towards sharks. Now, actually, so am I. I love sharks, and I'd like to give a little bit of a shout-out to the Shark Files podcast. It is one of the best podcasts that I've been listening to at the moment. It's a really, really interesting way of telling a story. And if you're going out for a a medium length walk, it's the perfect length for you as well. If you enjoy our podcast, I would really recommend listening to the Shark Files podcast. You can find it on all the major streaming sites. So give it a listen and tell them DSR sent you. 
But now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Well, let's widen the topic a little bit now, and this is going to end up in something that I bet you won't predict right now. But it isn't just Russia that uses marine life for military purposes. The USA are also very deep into this Mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. well. Now, officially, the US Navy has identified the following creatures that have potential for military application. Uh Uh, The first one there is beluga. Bottlenose dolphin. Common dolphin. Doll's porpoise. False killer whale. Or what's a false killer whale? Um, it, well, it it doesn't. It looks like a killer whale, but it isn't one. Oh. So it's, it's got the same <laughs> kind of markings on it. I had no idea. Yeah. Orca. Which is a killer whale. Yeah. Uh, Pacific white-sided dolphin. Pilot whale. Riso's dolphin. Rough-toothed dolphin. California sea lion. Common seal. Elephant seal. Fur seals. Gray seal. Stellar sea lion. Birds. Sharks. <laughs> Rays. Sea turtles. <laughs> yeah, some of these, um, I mean, potential. No. I mean, but sea, a sea, sea turtle. turtle, what are you going to do? Create a suicide sea turtle. Yeah, I was about to say, the only thing I can think of doing is putting a bomb on it, a fishing rod on its back and a fish on the front and just making it go straight. Because yeah. like... Those things are grumpy. Like, people try to pet them underwater and they just munch. <laughs> well, yeah. But, I mean, the thing, the big ones that stand out for me on that, I mean, obviously you've got all of the dolphins and whales. You've got sea lions, although you've got... But the, you can train those really well, though. But you've got elephant seals and stellar sea lions, which are yeah, two of the biggest types of... I them. don't think they would I mean, do much those, listening. But those things could board enemy ships and probably <laughs> take it over. Have you seen them on a ship? They're huge. They're massive. They're absolutely huge. And then we've got birds, which I suppose could be used for surveillance, but sharks. Surveillance, <laughs> just binoculars. Yeah. Strap a GoPro to it. Yeah, go. yeah. Depends um, what kind of bird it is, I suppose. Quieter than a drone, I suppose, but mm-hmm. uh, but sharks. No. Going to try and train a shark? Uh, n- yeah, they're not going to do hey nothing boy. for me yet. <laughs> Big meat torpedoes. Not a meat torpedo. <laughs> yes, they are. To agree to disagree on that one. <laughs> so, underwater creatures that have been successfully trained include beluga whales, dolphins, seals, and sea lions. Mm. Dolphins and sea lions are favoured by the USA in particular, sea lions being especially useful as they're amphibious, so they can exist both on land and water. Now, whales and dolphins can be said to see through sound by sonar, and this makes them invaluable for locating anything. All of the successfully trained animals are generally used for finding and sometimes retrieving objects. They're especially good at finding both mines and also for finding divers who may be trying to plant explosives on boats or military platforms. What they do is they'll patrol the area and if they find a diver, they plant a tag on them, which alerts the military as to the diver's location. The Navy has stated that since dolphins cannot discern the difference between enemy and friendly vessels, divers or swimmers, it would be a very haphazard means of warfare, essentially where they'd be rogue (laughs) agents just blowing up anything that came into their territory. So instead, the animals are trained to detect all mines or anything else of concern, report it back to the handlers who then make a human decision to decide on the appropriate response. That's actually like amazing. To be honest. It's, it's really intelligent, but it does negate one of the more humorous rumours out there that during Hurricane Katrina in 2005, uh, there were actually media reports that some of the Navy's dolphins, equipped with poison dart guns and trained to attack hostile swimmers, were out there in the water. They'd escaped when their containment area in Lake Port Chirain, where supposedly these dolphins were held. And as much as I'd love for that to be true, the military strongly deny this. <laughs> Of course they do. Military dolphins were officially deployed in both the Vietnam War and in Bahrain. The US Navy Marine Mammal Program, the NMMP, officially did not exist at this time, Uh officially, Uh and was only declassified in the early 1990s. They were also used in the 2003 invasion of Iraq. What? The NMMP currently consists of squads MK4 through 8. The MK4, 7 and 8 teams use dolphins. MK5 uses sea lions. MK6 uses both sea lions and dolphins. These teams can be deployed at 72 hours notice by ship. 
aircraft, helicopter, and even land vehicle to regional conflicts or staging areas around the world. It just blows my mind to think of a dolphin in one of those kind of like little hammocks they put them yeah, in, yeah. covering them with water, transporting them to war- basically conflict areas mm. to go poison dart or tag people. <laughs> It's just a really... It's it's an absurd notion that if you didn't know it was true, you'd think this was like Monty Python-esque humour. Like, honestly, it just sounds like a weird internet story that, like, never was. I... It... <laughs> they can be deployed within 72 hours. It just sounds so weird. Do like, you need a dolphin? <laughs> do a whale? You, can oh. you wait 72 hours? <laughs> It's just bizarre. Like, it really is a simulation. This is not real life. I can't believe this is a thing. Like, it's wild. It's smart, but it's wild. So it goes without saying, though, that uh, the NMMP's use of animals is extremely controversial. Um, (laughs) However, the the military states that it only uses positive reinforcement and never ill-treats the animals. That's the... Oh, okay. People thought they were, yeah. That's the US Army's stance on everything. Well, they... Uh, Those kind of, like, dolphins and seals and stuff, they do work with, mm -hmm. like, basically give them a treat. They do the thing. (laughs) Russia's program is unknown, but considering how they treat their Olympic athletes, I would rather be a US dolphin spy than a Russian one. (laughs) They're so mysterious, aren't they, Russia? They're just doing weird shit and they won't point it out. (laughs) Now let's come back to that list of potential marine life that could have military applications. So the one that stuck out to me was sharks. So I looked into this a little bit. And from 1958 to 1971, the US military tried to train sharks as suicide bombers in a secret operation known as Project Headgear. They trained sharks to swim in a straight line upon release and electric shocked them if they veered off course through boxes that were located either side of the shark to kind of steer them. And this didn't work very well and the project was abandoned. However, in 2006, it appears that the US had come back around to the idea and developed an implant which could be implanted into the shark's brain and exploited their seventh sense, the electromagnetic capabilities. As I said, about 2006, that's come back around again. But it, it's not really getting too far that we've heard of. These are not really used for military applications so much, like as in attacking. It's not like they're sort of sending, you know, Bruce off to go and attack an enemy <laughs> diver. What they're trying to do with it is to allow sharks to use them for more complex activities, such as inspecting undersea cables, monitoring submarines, and uh, potentially could be used as some kind of augmented shark assassins, I would assume. But that's not what they're saying. (laughs) Hold up, hold up. They had remote control robo-sharks. That's what they had. That they shocked. They strapped a bomb to Mm -hmm. and shocked. They basically had shock indicators. This is the one time I will say this, (laughs) but they did literally turn them into meat torpedoes. (laughs) See, I told you! Meat torpedoes. You you said it wasn't a thing. Oh, they're so nice. Oh, you don't know what they do when humans aren't around. The military looked at them, had the same thought as me. Meat torpedoes. Strapped a bomb on. They they made robo shocks. Exploding now, robo shocks. Now Linz. Now Linz. Oh no! What now? This was two thousand and six. Not even that long ago. When is a shark not a shark? And this isn't a dad joke. It is a dad joke. I feel it, it. It's not. When is a shark not a shark? When it's codename Ghost Swimmer. The USA's fucking robot shark. (laughs) So yes, why augment a shark when you can build your own? So Linz, I'd like you to take a look at this video. So here we have Operation Silent Nemo. If you can describe what's happening. Um, There's a man with a radio, like remote control, I think. Oh my gosh, there's... There's a robot shark. It swims like a shark. It really does. It's a bit like stop animation-y, but oh my god, they actually built a robo shark. Yep, it's just swimming around looking like a shark. From a distance, it the really tail, does look like yep, a shark. The tail, it, they really caught the motion of an actual shark. Honestly, that looks like... I'm impressed. So what this is designed for is for observing military targets. Mm-hmm. So if you imagine if it looks like a shark and it acts like a shark, people might reasonably make the assumption that it's a shark, not a US spy. You would not suspect. The first thought in your mind if you saw that would not be, hey, it looks a bit strange. Wonder if it's a robot shark created by the US Army. No, you'd be like, that shark's a bit weird. Yours might not be. (laughs) 
So that brings us to the end of today's episode. From belugas to dolphins to sharks to robotic marine life, the seas might be even more dangerous than you think. Yeah, no shit. Now I'm scared of everything. And now I'm questioning if what I'm looking at is actually what I'm looking at or if it's just a robot created by the US Army. Well, am I secretly a right whale? A really small one. A really small right whale. <laughs> yeah, you unzip your um, Chris suit mm-hmm. and you just burst out and fill the entire room. <laughs> that would be amazing. So if you want to see that... Make sure that you subscribe to our Instagram uh, when I will come out of my Chris suit. But please do take a look at our Instagram, which is what, Lens? D.S.Radio. And when you go there, it's the best way to get in touch with us. You can leave a comment on this. You can send us a DM. I give us some constructive feedback if you'd like to as well. But please be nice because we are very weak skinned. So Speak for yourself. No, that's not an invitation to bully me. Thank you very much. Let's Let's all... Have a nice day. Don't don't be mean to us, okay? There's also a a link tree, which you can see in the bio, and that's got the links to all of our social media. And there's also the top one on there is a link to our tip jar. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's where you can uh, leave a little monetary contribution to anything that you enjoy without ha- the need to have to subscribe to anything like Patreon or you don't have to make a more of a commitment. So if you've enjoyed this and you'd like to hear a little bit more and you'd like to contribute towards our goal, of uh, either draining Loch Ness or buying a dolphin, <laughs> whichever one we, we hit first, potentially putting a dolphin in Loch Ness, then you can go there, buy a surprise for a cup of coffee, and we will be eternally grateful for you. There's no obligation. We'd just be happy with you listening to this, giving us a like, rating us five stars on whatever platform you're listening this to. Follow us on Instagram. Thanks so much, everybody, for listening. Thanks, Chris, for that um, the insights onto the military application of marine life. Well, I'm freaked out. <laughs> and on that bombshell, thank you very much. And we'll see you next time when Linz is going to present a file to us. Yep. But we'll leave it. Until then. Bye. Bye.